Hey guys, before we get into the new lease in ClearPass, I want to shout out the sponsor of today's video, Upcomer. Upcomer is an awesome new app that will keep all of you esport lovers up to date with all the professional League of Legends games in real time. With this app, you can follow all of your favorite teams and players, get schedules and match notifications so you never miss a game, find brackets and standings, and get real time stats for the games. I use this app myself and I highly recommend it. Check the video description to download Upcomer, it's free for both iOS and Android. What's up guys, with the new patch 9.9 .9 dropping just a couple of days ago, we have a big change for junglers, and that is the new change to Scuttle Crab. Instead of spawning at 2 minutes, it now spawns at 3.15, which will slow down the pace of the early game for jungling, giving other champions a place in the meta, and making horizontal jungling more common than before. With this change comes a change to early game pathing for Lee Sin, and so today I want to address this and give you my initial 5 clear paths for Lee Sin that I think will work for the new patch. Now keep in mind this is all still new, so some of these clears could be tweaked or flat out abolished altogether as I get more experience on the new patch. But with that being said, let's jump into the first clear path for Lee Sin, patch 9.9. .9. A lot of what will dictate where you start and what path you take will simply be which side of the map you want to prioritize in the early game. If you have a farming bot lane like Janna and Caitlyn, there's a slim chance that ganking them early will result in anything. However, if you have an aggressive Lucian Braum bot lane, then going bot early could be a quick way to snowball the early game as Lee. So the first clear path is a blue buff start with the intent of getting bot scuttle on spawn. Starting with blue buff, you'll transition to wolves. It's important to slowly kite the camps you're killing toward the direction of your next buff to save a few seconds on your overall clear speed. You also should focus the small wolves first in order to take the least amount of damage possible. Make sure you're properly utilizing Lee Sin's passive for maximum efficiency, letting two auto attacks off in between each ability cast. W is by far the best ability to start at level 1, and Q being your next choice at level 2. Now after you finish Wolves, you'll transition right to your red buff, skipping Raptors to save time on getting closer to bot lane. You'll use your first charge of smite on red to ensure maximum efficiency and healthiness, and from red you'll Q over the Krug pit. Now you want to make sure as you clear Krugs, you focus the big Krug first, and you'll kite around in a circle to avoid taking damage from the small Krug. You'll full clear the Krugs and path to bot side scuttle, which should be spawning just about the exact time you get there. Now, of course, League of Legends is not a one-dimensional game, which means there is a strong possibility that bot lane is gankable before you go to scuttle, so don't ignore that if the opportunity is there. Once you take scuttle, you can now transition to either a bot lane gank, mid lane gank, or you can finish your raptors to get level 4. Again, the purpose of this clear is to efficiently clear, while prioritizing the bottom side of the map in the early game. The second clear path is pretty much a mirror of the first clear, but with a red buff start, and the intent of ending topside scuttle on spawn. In situations where you think top lane could be volatile, whether it's an aggressive matchup or you simply can't impact bot lane early, this is a good time to use this clear. The clear begins with red buff, transitioning to raptors second. Make sure to focus the little raptors first to take the least amount of damage possible. You'll need to pop a potion while on raptors in order to stay healthy. As you transition to your wolves third, once again, focus the small wolves first before the big wolf. After Wolves, you'll take Blue using Smite on either Blue Buff or on Big Wolf. Then you'll finish your Gromp and immediately path to top Scuttle. With a leash, you should be hitting the Scuttle Crab around 315 to 320, which should ensure that you at least have a chance to contest if the enemy jungler does happen to path there. It's important to save your second charge of Smite for Scuttle in the event that you do need to fight for it. Once you take Scuttle, you then have the option of ganking mid or top, and if neither lane is gankable, you should check to see if the enemy jungler took his Raptors yet. If not, you can take the Raptors, which will give you level 4. Your Krugs will still be up, so you should immediately back and then path toward your Krugs. Now, both clear paths that I just showed you are the most efficient ways of clearing while getting to a Scuttle spawn at the right time, but efficiency is not always the most important thing on Lee Sin. There's a lot of junglers who can clear faster than you, outscale you, and even outduel you in the early game, so trying to beat these junglers at their own game will often not work out as planned, and it'll leave you in a bad spot. Lee Sin may not be the fastest clearing jungle, but he does have immense kill potential with his early ganks given the right circumstance. For example, champions with early kill power like Renekton and Pantheon synergize really well with an early Lee Sin gank. 
The third clear path I want to show you is exactly the same as the previous one, but you will instead skip raptors and go straight to wolves after red, finish your topside jungle, and with about 20 to 30 seconds to spare before topside scuttle spawns, you can use that time to go for an early gank on top lane. Again, it's your job to dictate when this is appropriate, which comes down to knowing matchups, but I think having different clear paths in your arsenal for different situations is important, so I did want to explain that. Of course, after you gank top, Scuttle will be spawning and you can then secure the Scuttle. The last red start clear path I want to show you is definitely a risky decision, but with the new changes comes new champions entering the jungle meta, a lot of which won't be the level 2 bullies that you're used to playing against, such as Xin Zhao, Camille, Pantheon, etc. And given the right matchup, Lee Sin has a really strong early game invade on the enemy jungler. With just two abilities, Lee Sin can stick to you pretty harshly and outdo a lot of these farming oriented junglers. So as you can see here after I take red, I immediately vertical to the enemy's blue buff, securing the blue and then transitioning to Gromp. Now the goal here is not only to take the blue, but to also look to fight the enemy jungler as he paths from his top side to his blue side. Now you do have to know the enemy jungler's start point for this to be a good idea because if they start blue you'll simply waste your time. Now you can also go from red to enemy red with the same goal in mind, but again if you don't know their start I don't recommend going for this aggressive early game lease in strategy. The last clear that I do want to show you today is another situational clear that I don't anticipate using a whole lot, but I think showing you all the possibilities is good, so I want to quickly show you the blue buff start full clear. Similar to the full clear path from Season 8, the clear is blue buff to Gromp, to Wolves, to Raptors, to Red, to Bot Scuttle, and then to Krugs in that order. Uh, the point of this is to maximize efficiency and give you the strongest first back possible without having to interact with anyone else on the map. This clear I can only see being useful against champions that don't have ultimates such as Elise and Nidalee. The reason why that matters is because this full clear will be your fastest way to getting level 6 if that's your game plan and champions like Nidalee and Elise don't spike the same way Lee Sin does at level 6 due to the fact that they don't have ultimates, so this allows you to avoid interaction early while getting to your level 6 power spike as quickly as possible so you can beat these types of junglers. Now that is all the clear paths that I have at this point. I haven't really had the chance to really experiment with the changes enough to say with certainty if all of these paths I've shown you today are viable. This is simply my first thoughts after seeing the changes to Scuttle, so take everything with a grain of salt that you've heard here today, and definitely do some experimenting of your own to see where your highest rate of success lies. That is it for me today. I do appreciate you guys stopping by to hear what I have to say. If you're new here, I'd appreciate a sub to my channel. If you enjoyed the video, a like always helps. But that is it for me, and until next time guys, I'll see you later. Peace. Before I roll my outro, I wanted to just catch up with you guys because uh, I haven't in a while, and in the past I would just make a whole video for something like this, but I think it just fits better at the end of a video. So first of all, to all of you who have taken the time to follow my Facebook stream and actually come to a few streams, I appreciate it more than you know. My stream has grown to about triple the size in just a few months since I've started you know, hard promoting it on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't yet done that, as always, I'll leave my Facebook live stream link down in the description for you to come follow me. But beyond that, I did just want to talk a little bit about my YouTube channel, which I want to make a top priority, but I've just been so burnt out and almost feel like it's hard to keep uploading interesting videos at this point. I did lose my editor last month, which is why I started uploading full gameplays pretty much as the norm. But I recognize that a lot of why some of you do watch me is because of the pack filled Leeson plays in a short, easy to digest video, you know, quick entertainment, doesn't require you to spare so much time to me. So bearing that in mind, I plan to go back to editing my own videos and doing just that with full gameplays kind of being spread out throughout to make sure I can still upload five days per week. Now at the moment, I feel like my content has become pretty much just stream highlights with some fun Leeson builds every once in a while, which is obviously something that I can continue to do forever as long as I'm streaming, but I do kind of crave the ability to make videos that aren't always 100% related to Lee Sin or not even video game related for that matter, but it has almost become a bit of a pipe dream to me at this point because I know that if I'm struggling to get my viewership back to where it used to be while uploading strictly Lee Sin content, 
how can I expect viewership to go up once I start something completely different and new to my channel. Now I do plan on uploading a new Lee Sin cosplay of Pool Party Lee Sin sometime within the next month, which is something I'm super excited about, but my content ideas list has pretty much been dwindled down to the point where I'm scrambling for uploads every week and shit posting a lot to stay in the algorithm that YouTube has made ever so stressful for YouTubers. I pretty much have this video crisis every year and I usually get flooded with people saying, you know, make whatever you want, upload coaching videos or, you know, try other champions. And while that makes me feel good, I know that it's just not that simple. When I upload other champions, it very rarely gets views unless I clickbait the hell out of it, which is something I know is frowned upon. And that actually brings me to like the last thing I want to talk about and just get off my chest to you guys on an actual video. And that's about some of my titles where, you know, I put number one Lee Sin NA or rank one Lee Sin, whatever. And it always attracts haters or randoms to just leave comments about how I'm not actually the best Lee Sin. I'm not even close to being the best Lee Sin, yada yada, or how I'm just clickbaiting. I just want to say one, it's a video title. It's not meant to be taken too seriously. It's meant to entice people, nothing more, nothing less. Don't take my titles so seriously. It's not me being overly arrogant. I'm just experimenting with new titles to see what the views will be like. And also having confidence in myself as a Lee Sin player is a positive thing, not a negative thing. So keep that in mind the next time you call me out for putting a title like that. That's all I really wanted to get off my chest. Uh, I guess the reason I'm putting it into this video is to spark discussion, because even though I rarely use the ideas that are given to me in the comments, there's always some thought provoking elements things that I notice when I do read the suggestions and ideas that you guys give me. So I'm just hoping that reading them will, you know, spark some ideas for me moving forward because I really do have high hopes for this YouTube channel and I don't want to see it lose progress. With that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in and listening to me today. That's it for me and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. I'm willing to die for this shit. I'm ready to flip and I end up in prison the rest of my life for this shit. So my mama ain't want me, she got in a bush and I end up surviving this shit. And if I want a son and I ain't got the money, I'll probably be robbing this shit. Don't know how much I cry for this shit. Said I'm willing to ride for this shit. You know murder's my hobby inside of my closet, it's a bunch of dead bodies and shit. Niggas said it, I'm cursed, cause I go to